what's up you guys hope you guys are doing awesome so i'm super happy that quite a lot of people were interested in the last video where they were amazed about the different opportunities in web3 right now however a big question kept popping up from a lot of people was that oh how do you actually apply to get a job or in another way i think i saw a lot of i guess people that are newer to web3 are mostly from web2 trying to apply but they're kind of going about it the wrong way right or they're going about it a way that's less effective so i want to share another more effective way that may be new to a lot of people so let's get into it however before i get into it just know that i have no idea what i'm talking about don't trust your financial well-being and job applying with a random stranger off the internet okay so it's on you but here's some info about the web 2 mentality right so the typical stuff web 2 typical process you send your resume the stuff you said you did or you go around asking for a job back for a job or something i've seen a lot of people do that they just are just like randomly people asking people oh can i get a job so this is seen as value extraction so when someone else that's i guess a little bit more fortunate or they have a lot more stuff to give or more value to give uh this can be kind of off-putting well i'm trying to word this in a very i guess careful delicate way but it is what it is right you see you seem desperate by asking begging for a job right so by going about it another way which i'll tell you about you about it in the, the next slide it could be more positive then you'll probably wait one to three weeks before your scheduled interview rounds and then you hopefully get the position after and start working under the boss's directions so there are some drawbacks with this there's a very low chance to stand out it's probably like dozens hundreds of people applying to a single position it's very time consuming and it may waste time if the company sucks balls or something and there's less room for salary and job responsibility negotiations so you might get stuck doing something that you hate for a long time just because you have to do it and that was the only job offer you got within like the past few months or something right so let's talk about the web3 dgen method so DGEN process is that you apply with your ongoing projects involved with. So you show proof of your present success, whatever projects and communities you're involved with. In. For example, if you want to work in marketing, maybe you talk about how you help with different social media posts. You helped about, you talk about how you helped create different marketing campaigns with different projects. So this could be done as a volunteer too, right? Then eventually you just refine your methods and then you just get so good they'll probably offer you some incentives for it and then you use that on your resume to show that you know what you're talking about secondly you can get directly involved with the team and community before the official offer right so maybe in web 2 you get the interview and then you get the offer for a different salary or something but then you can directly get involved with the team and community so maybe before you want to apply for the marketing position you just show them your marketing proposals you'll say like oh this is how I, i'll change the twitter how i'll change the youtube etc then that is a way more active way of starting it then thirdly you can adapt depending on the team and community chemistry benefits and long-term vision so you just start working the team maybe you really like working with teams so you continue with it maybe you don't like working with the team so you don't continue with it or maybe you mesh or don't mesh with the community right then the benefits too you can adapt maybe if you gain more benefits like a salary and different ownership of the product then maybe you want to stay but if you have less ownership maybe you want to go part-time or not work for them and then for the long-term vision too right so maybe in the beginning you really believed in project but later on they started changing the way they did things so then maybe you can adapt you go from full-time to part-time etc which i'll explain more in the next slide so the positives of this web3 mentality is that you're able to create the most optimal career for you right so maybe some projects you want to go part-time some one project you want to go full-time really dedicate to another project you want to not work at all or maybe another one you want to go in advising consulting position then you're able to work with the team before the official agreement to see if it's a good fit to see whether you want to fully commit to them or not 
and also you're able to negotiate responsibilities and the salary after becoming invaluable. So maybe you take on a certain position, you apply for one, however, later on you start working for several other positions, different roles, and then you use that as leverage coming into the offer to ask for a higher salary or something. So here are some ways to find opportunities. So first one, you could become major community members in the niches that you really love. For example, like DeFi, NFT gaming, art, certain protocols, layer ones. Maybe you're really involved with Cardano. Maybe you're really involved with Avalanche, Matic, Solana, etc. So there are a bunch of new layer ones popping up that recently got a bunch of like hundreds of millions in funding. So you could just hang out around those different layer ones and see how to go about it, what opportunities are there. Then they're usually on Twitter, YouTube, Discord, Telegram, etc. So try to hang out around them. Second would be to build relationships with awesome people you meet and become the go-to person for what you want to specialize in and get hired for. So maybe you just become really good at designing graphics. So then maybe in all your social circles in Web3, everyone knows you as that graphics designing guy. Maybe another person you're really good at making articles so you become the go-to person making articles so just really find what you're good at and specialize in it and do that a bunch refine it and people will hire you eventually for it last one would be to provide solutions to whatever your favorite projects are needing help in for example maybe there's a new project that really sucks at marketing so you come in help them marketing if you're good at that maybe they need some graphics work like with their social media posts or something, maybe they need to up their security and then you know how to code and check for security in the Discord, in the game and the coding of the game. So whatever they need. Then here's another game changing concept. And that's how to scale your opportunities, right? So typically in Web2, I think most people say like, oh, they either have one job so they're employed or they're unemployed so they have no jobs however you can scale that in web3 for example maybe there's a golden opportunity right so you have major room for growth it's welcome you really are connected with the team the benefits are great the pay is great you get major staking in the project you get different benefits different connections you believe in a project long term the community is awesome you just have an overall great feeling working with them so if those all check the boxes, then it's a no brainer. Go full time. Just really commit to that and become as invaluable as you can to really contribute and help that project grow. Second one is like a silver opportunity. Maybe there's decent room for growth and you may or may not be as welcomed. Maybe it's a cool group to work with. Benefits are decent. Salary is decent or something. Believe in a project medium term. You're not sure about the long term. It's mostly fun to work with the team. So you're curious to see where to go and you still want to be deeply involved. So this goes down to the bottom point, right? Opportunities may change over time. For example, maybe the golden project got reduced to like a silver project where in the beginning it was super cool. Then over time management kind of became ass or something. So now you're like, okay, maybe I should transition to more part time. I still love the community. I still love the team. However, it's just more logical to hop on to another opportunity that will welcome your talents and cultivate you and challenge you more. So then you could go part-time for these kind of opportunities where you still really like them, but you don't want to get as deeply involved, right? Then last one is bronze, bronze opportunity. So maybe there's very little room for growth. If you apply, you get doing, you'll get stuck on a task and doing the same thing for a long time or something. Maybe co-workers are difficult to work with, benefits may be okay, maybe you're not sure about the project's long-term trajectory, there's just a lot of things, wrong things going on with the project, maybe you're jaded to the project's future. So in that case, it's probably time to switch projects ASAP, right? So maybe you're on this because you need it for pay, you just are really desperate for that money right now. So what you could do is to just work on this project but maybe you start applying to other ones see what offers you get and then maybe you transition to this from full-time to part-time and then once you find another great full-time offer you just quit this one and then you find another really good part-time offer like a silver opportunity and then with the full-time 
ideally be like a golden opportunity or something. So hope you guys like this video. Uh, hope it helped and let me know if you guys have any questions, you know, so I know this process can be very confusing, especially transitioning from that Web 2 mentality to that Web 3 mentality, right? And that those different concepts like uh, value giving over value extraction, right? So value giving as in you do your work first, you present them with solutions, and then you use that as leverage for getting a higher offer, right? As opposed to just wanting a higher offer right off the bat, because I guess most people would end up having their higher offer lower ball down from the employer because they haven't shown any work, right? But if you become invaluable, you show that you can really contribute to the community, you can really do your job really well and you keep growing, you keep challenging yourself, then that'll be a really good spot for you to be in. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to y'all next time.